another part of automotive history here at the Kacken 2019. Tom, come on back here for a second. If you haven't been here for, for a few minutes, I'm Scott Hoke. Normally, I'm on the other side of the Meekin Mobile Experience. I host the collector car auctions on NBCSN. And we are here with a 1966 Chevy 2 Supersport L79. And uh, this car, we'll talk about it in a minute, this car has a terrific story on its own. And uh, it has been restored by a terrific storyteller and a guy who knows more about, who has probably forgotten more about L79 machines than anybody in this room has known. Tom Migat, who lives right here in the Chicagoland area, spent 26 years as a mechanic for Nicky Chevrolet back in the day. And so he knows his stuff. How many L79 cars do you say you've owned in your career? 28. He's owned 28 of these, so I think he could write the book if there was a book to be written. Uh, first of all, get, before we unveil this, uh, tell us a little bit about this car from your standpoint. Well, this is an early built car. It's a third week of October, built in 65. Cars that are built before December are a little bit different because it's an early part of the model year, and they make changes since then. The tailpipes are a little bit different. The uh, trim tag is a carryover 65 trim tag style. Some of the bolts that are on it are different. A lot of subtle little changes. The tailpipes are different. It's kind of like they throw it out there and then they decide to make their changes after that or whatever. In the course of restoring this, we verified a story by the original owner that this car was a GM show car that was owned up in Portland. So it's got a lot of stuff that you might not normally see on a Chevy 2 Supersport. It's correct. Being a show car, they wanted to showcase options that would be something unusual. It has factory headrests, which there's a designation for that on the trim tag. You can't just go ahead and put those on a car and say it's a, it's a headrest car. It's actually just like a heater delete. A heater delete has a, uh, a code on the trim tag to designate that. It's all whatever Fisher body would need to go ahead when they were building the back half of the car. So it's nice to be able to verify things. Sometimes it's word of mouth, sometimes it's corroboration or whatever. So it's, it's, it's just an interesting piece of story to go ahead and verify what you've already heard. All right, you guys ready? We want to pull the cover. Bill Akers, uh, the owner of the car, and this gentleman here, your name is? Uh, Joe Miller. Joe Miller. And Tom, are they going to pull the cover off of this? I guess Tom and Bill are going to do this. And here we go. Oh, man. I tell you what, a lot of people say the 66s are the best looking model year of this car, and uh, I would be in that group as well. Tom, come on back over here real quick when you get the hood pump. And we'll talk a little bit more about this car and the rarity of this car. Uh, of the 28 that you have owned, I mean, you restored this one. What, uh, where does this one fall in terms of quality of the car and uh, the options and the rarity of the car as well? Well, some of the rare options, it has transistorized ignition, only available on an L79. Out of 5,481 built, only less than 600 had TI. It's also a mag wheel car, which is very special. When you got mag wheels or wire wheels, it came with a screwdriver that was in the trunk to go ahead and remove them. It also has factory headrest, which is another very rare option. Of all the cars that I've had, I've had TI cars. I've never had a headrest car. I've owned every color except the dark turquoise. I've owned every color of them. And uh, Chevrolet, this car was available only as a super sport until mid-year after March when they released it to be a corporate order in a different body style. But up until March or whatever, this car was a super sport color only, as was yellow and Chateau Slate. What, what was your first reaction when Bill brought you this car and said, hey, uh, I want you to restore this and this is what I want it to be? Well, the interesting thing about it is he had sent me pictures of it and he had already had it painted or whatever. But the code for Marina Blue is code F. Well, 66 code F and 67 code F, they share the same code, but they're different. 
This is a silver blue, whereas 67 is a blue blue. So this car was actually painted blue blue. So when I saw it, when it rolled out of the trailer for the first time, I said, uh, the color's wrong. So I wound up having the car repainted in the correct shade. And it's very hard to find this paint, so it was actually matched off of the original dealer color chart where it has three inch round bubble discs that are painted in the exact color. So a lot of time and effort went just matching the color, which I think is perfect. Oh, it's spot on. Anybody out there with a Chevy 2 that you're in the process of restoring or have restored, uh, I learned something a little bit ago. Tell me about uh, the uniqueness of these cars in terms of not being interchangeable with a lot of other stuff in the Chevrolet world. Well, when Chevrolet first introduced this car in 62, it was only supposed to be like a subcompact car for mom's grocery counter or whatever. Well, the public liked the size of it. They wanted more power. So when they went to convert it and put a V8 in it, they went to take their parts off the shelf, existing castings or whatever, to find out that, uh, wait a minute, this stuff doesn't work. So this is one of the rare cars that Chevrolet re-engineered the drivetrain to fit the car. They took the oil filter and they moved the oil filter an inch and a half higher up in the block. It has a front sump oil pan, unlike any other Chevrolet, like a Ford. The uh, bell housing, the, the throwout for it because of the shape of the tunnel, comes out at 7 o'clock. They pass the clutch linkage right below the oil filter. And everything else about it, the rear end, it's the narrowest rear end that Chevrolet ever produced as a 12 bolt. The shifter, no shifter from any other car. Impala, Chevelle, Corvette will fit in the same opening. It's six inches further back. So people who have ever done a car or done Chevrolets get one of these and they think, oh, well, I can just go ahead and put this and this on. Then they find out, uh, wait a minute, it's different. So it's not an easy car to go ahead and make a conversion unless you know what you have to change. Well, I, I mentioned that he spent 26 years at Nicky Chevrolet and he's owned 28 of these cars. Probably, I'm not going to go into detail, but probably on a first name basis with a lot of the Chicago PD guys around here. Why did these cars appeal to you so much as a young mechanic? Well, the thing that I like so much about them, they're so light. They're extremely fast with minimal amount of modifications. The engine placement, which is just like a mid-year Corvette, the relationship between number one spark plug and the front steering axis or whatever is ideal for drag racing or whatever. That's why you used to see a ton of them on the drag strip. By the way, he ended up having to put his car on the drag strip because it didn't work out on the street so well. Yeah, when I got my first one in 68, I, uh, I had fender wheel headers in it, I had 488 gears in it, 8 inch cheater slicks, and I amassed 31 moving violations in one year. I lost my license for three months because the car was so fast. Can we get a round of applause for that? Uh, anybody have 31 moot? No, I'm kidding. I did lose my license for three months. I got drafted, spent two years in the Army, and when I came out, I made it into a full... I took a 6,004 mile car and made it into a flat-out race car. Well, you know what? Let's give a round of applause for Tom Migat, the guy who did the work on this Chevy 2 L79. It is absolutely spectacular. He'll be around here if you want to talk ask more questions. Bill, thank you very much. We appreciate you bringing this car to McCacken. Thank you guys for being here as well.